right, and here we are. Game three between Team Spirit and Team Lithium. Game one going the way of Team Spirit. Game two going the way of Lithium after Team Spirit had a 14,000 net worth lead. We get into this game three with a Wisp Gyro for Team Lithium once again, and for Team Spirit, Centaur Bane once again. So similar lineups coming out from game one. Interestingly. Yeah, Team Spirit uh, thinks how to counter Io and Gyro in general. So I think every single time I see them playing against Io, they love to play a Centaur. So this is their offlane combo, which they want to face Io and Gyro. I don't think they played it perfectly in game number one. Always try to focus Io if, if they can. Just try to go from behind with the Bane and uh, try to set it up with a sleep. Yeah, that's what they were doing. Uh, first couple of levels, it didn't go so well. But as it started to get, you know, level 5, level 6, and more into the mid-game, they were able to get in there, use this, the Nightmare, then with the Stomp and the Double Edge, and pick off the Wisp. There were a couple times where they went for the Gyro, I, which uh, you know, we talked about in that first game, where we thought that they should be going strictly for the Wisp, but... We'll have to see yeah, pretty, uh, if they learn from that. Pretty much the same bands in the first phase in all three games. Three at Necro Phoenix, Chen, they left Raid King this time. Ten seconds. Yeah, so I'm not going to have that uh, Skitter Wraith remaining. King, that iconic duo. And I, I, I'm kind of wondering where where Team Spirit's head's at right now. I feel like, you know, is, are, are they stable right now? They did happen to throw a 14,000 net worth lead pretty quickly. One fight, that's all it took. They need to be more disciplined about... They have a good game sense, what they need to do in-game. Just sometimes when they are ahead, it feels like they lose compass. Yeah, it seems like sometimes teams just go out a little bit further than they think. They overreach on some things where they should play safe. But then you see, you know, sometimes playing safe loses you games. Um, I saw it yesterday... Alliance versus Furzy. Um, Alliance could have just pushed, probably won the game. Huskar dead for 52, no buyback. I believe seconds. three heroes were dead with no buyback, and they chose to take a really safe go for the Aegis, Five and they ended up actually away. losing the fight with the Ancient exposed and losing the game. So, I mean, there there are definitely times to play it safe, times to, to overreach, but that was definitely a time to get back and you know what they can throw with a blink echo slam that was a definitely a time to just sit back wait for the next roche and then go in again tiny is in the pool Radiant's if they want to go for it prepare. bane and okay. aa pretty squishy huh. they decide to go for a rubik that's Dyer's that's their stun i think in the <laughs> so they're going for exact same lineup in game number three. We're just watching game one again. I don't know what you're talking about. This is not live. This is a rerun. That's it. Everything's just going to be the same. Yeah, and to prove it, I'm going to guess what's going to happen in the next 10 seconds. I'm going to say word Ten seconds. Geronimo. Geronimo, here we go. Five seconds remaining. Hoping it's the same. I really am. <laughs> but what was their last pick? Uh, they had the Gyro Wisp. And then what they have... What they ended up having mid. I gotta look. Oh my god. My brain's just not working right now to know. Off the top of my head. Let me take a quick, quick look if it's up here. On... Ractoda? Would it even be there? It might actually just be on Liquipedia. Oh, gosh. I'm getting old. That's what happens. I just, I, I can't remember anything anymore. 
first goes the memory, and then that's it. But first game, it was uh, Shadow Fiend and Bat Rider. But they went Silencer, so it's not the same exact draft. They picked Rubik this time. And what about Team Spirit? What was their mid hero? It was Brood. Oh, yeah, so Brood's still in the pool. Sort of. Okay. I haven't seen that I've year in a while. I've seen them, seen it uh, two days ago when Team Spirit played, I think it was Windstrike, and they had a Ricky safe lane. And they played against uh, the Slardar. Slardar did uh, extremely well at the early, early game, but uh, they just lost that game. Seems like uh, Team Spirit has a lot of... Uh, seconds. A lot of win rate with that uh, safe lane Ricky. He loses the lane, but manages to come back in the mid game. I like always. You know, you, you lose your lane, and you, you, you're always expected to just win after that. They should probably ban the. Is the brood still viable here? Yeah, it is. They had the same heroes, Rubik, Slardar. They don't do much against the brood mother. You can put Slardar against the brood. He is not easily killed by a brood mother, so and also gives vision against the brood mother, which is a huge benefit, but not the best catch that they have with the eye Rubik. Here's the plan. Lithium are the ones who pick the the brood mother this time around. They don't ban it. We get shocked. We're like, oh, how are they gonna let that brood? Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I lied. So if Team Spirit has a last pick, they could go for one of the Spirit Brothers. Maybe Ember Spirit. Not too much magical damage besides some on the Gyro. So his Flame Guard will stay on in the fights. And also not too much Lockdown, Rubik and Slardar. Let's see what uh, they have prepared as a last pick. Radiant's turn to pick. Tiny. So yeah, this is... This is the Tiny I was talking about. It uh, got banned in the first game because Tiny can blow up these uh, three heroes, AA, Bane, and Ricky. Really good pick. And I think it works, you know, they've got Rubik, Sardar, and Tiny. I think w with Blink Daggers on Tiny and Sardar, we could see them open up the map for the Gyro a little bit better. And I think Ten Gyro will, seconds. at least for the hopes of Lithium, find a lot more farm this time Five around and, and have a, a much better game than game one. They could go for for an alchemist if they want to on a mid lane, or I still think something like an ember spirit is uh, is a good pick. And it should be ember against this tiny right in lane, uh, off lane Sardar, safe lane Jaro Wisp. Yeah, they have more than a minute to think about it, think through what's what's the best for them. Thinking Ember. I'm not gonna guess because I'm always wrong. Actually, I'll 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 back you. I got you. I got this Ember. I'm gonna go Ember as well, as an original thought. By the way, with Ember mid, I like Ember too. Um, you could definitely set up with like the Ricky, being each Nepperish, and there's a lot there to help him out and set up these fights in the mid game. And then to use it with the Stampede, too. Yeah, I think they need something to enable Ricky as well. With, uh, let's say, Searing Chains, you can hold people and then Ricky, Ricky ults and just destroys that one hero. So coming down to 20. And Monkey King. You led me in the wrong direction, Lakas. I trusted you. I trusted you with well, the Well, they could have picked they could have picked Ember and I would look smart, you would look smart as well, but uh, not today, my friend. So <laughs> Monkey King against the Tiny, they want to have this uh, mid matchup. It's not the best for Monkey King in terms of he's playing against melee heroes, he's going to stomp him in the lane because Tiny has a toss, so whenever Monkey King gets on top of him, he can just toss him away from him. I, I... Mikey King does not have a lot of HP, so he can easily die to, to Tiny's combo. 
Yeah, especially uh, if we get a mobile rotation from, say, the Rubik. And I think Tiny, what, he's going to be mid. Does this, uh, is he going to be looking more towards a Shadow Blade this game or Blink Dagger? Usually you get both, but one of them comes first uh, when you're okay. in, in the mid lane. Well, it's a couple of ways you can itemize Monkey King. You can go for either Echo Saber first item, which gives you some stats, more Jingu procs, uh, or you can go for a Shadow Blade, try to assassinate people. So then you have two Invis heroes and you can cut the back line. Or if you want to go for Maelstrom, which is more magical damage, but uh, we'll have to see how, how his game goes. Tiny, on the other hand, has zero armor, so that's really a downside, which means that uh, Boundless Strike, which is physical, is going to deal a ton of damage to Tiny. Who made you captain? It's pronounced Admiral. <laughs> a lot of laughing going on here. Huh? Jesus. So the lanes are going to be same as in game number one. We are going to have a Centaur and Bane against Gyro Io. And on the bottom lane, Slaughter and Rubik against Hero like an AA with uh, no escape whatsoever. And Ricky, let me see if... Yeah, Rubik already has a sentry this game. Yeah, so I something think... different from the last time we saw when they didn't bring that sentry or dust in a lane. You were talking about how definitely early battle. you could do something when you've got dust or that sentry early against the Ricky. And I th think with the Rubik, they should have a lot of opportunity here, right? With telekinesis, toss him right onto the Sardar and use the Slytherin Crush. Yeah, definitely. And the Ricky being not the greatest laner of all time, it's going to be hard for them. They're going to definitely lose the, the bottom lane. Oh, Ricky trying to backstab the rune. Let's see. Oops. No, not able to grab it. And Team Spirit. All right. Yeah, they'll grab two. He... So it's two piece. Ricky just scouted that uh, they placed a ward on the hill. So that's going to get dewarded. So Slytherin Crush was taking level one. You can have the telekinesis. Do you focus the Ricky early uh, just to try and shut him down? Does it really matter if you go for uh, Skitter or FNG with the telekinesis Slytherin Crush if you're trying for a kill? If they can reach AA, it's always a better choice. Since uh, he has two armor, no stout shield to block the damage. Ricky has a lot of armor level one. A lot of agility, eight armor. They're going to go for AA. Never mind. Oh, this is, this is huge. Good. They got that. They took away Radiant Sentry Ward. I think they tried to take yeah. away the Dire Sentry Ward, but it was immediately taken out. That's really big, and it, it makes me think that Lithium are going to be very much ahead in this lane. You said that they were, that Spirit was going to lose this lane. I think it's going to be really bad for them, especially with that Sentry being able to stay there. Like, this could be a problem. Oh, look at Monkey King. He tried to use a salve while Tiny was still in range and had the three grab charges, so he could just cancel it by throwing it. It's a waste of flask. Also, if you want to play aggressive as a Monkey King, I've seen people just go for Stout Shield and Orb of Venom and one set of Tangos and bring more Legion. And then you have the extra slow, so it means that your Jingus will proc. for this top lane maybe next time in Madara. Against Hesta Joe and Biver with the Bane and the Centaur, something we saw earlier. You see uh, when they do in fact try to maybe go for the Nightmare into the Hoofstomp Double Edge, but for right now, they're the ones getting pressured and they're behind their own Tier 1. With, and both uh, Peksu and Kezu, they bought Sentry Ward each. On the bottom lane, they want to devour that Sentry and have one extra just so they can see Ricky. And uh, the FNG is doing a good job since they didn't block the pool. He's just giving Ricky free levels. 
on the bottom. Everybody, let's see what Ricky is doing. He's using Blink Strike, but not attacking from behind, so he does not reveal himself. Just a hundred damage, and that's it on a creep. Hmm. Tiny with the illusion rune on mid, level four against level four. Five more CS on side of Monkey King. Oh, what a, oh, what a try. Did you see that? Tiny, okay, he wanted there to toss him back to the, to the illusion rune. And the Knight's got to be a little bit careful. He's got the Boundless Strike with Toss back up. Yeah, trying to use the... Well, he did actually end up doing it. It just it didn't get the kill, but... I would never think of doing that. Yeah, Taking because the Avalanche was uh, on cooldown, that's why. So not going as bad as I thought it would over here, bottom, as... Gyro over top ends up That's dropping the Biber oh, as well as uh, as well as the Centaur has to Joe. But now Skitter getting a little bit low. They've placed the Sentry in a different spot this time around with the Creep Wave a little bit higher. Getting that first blood for the side of Team Spirit and it being on Madara is pretty big. Oh, Case Rune on bottom. Tiny does not have Avalanche. Plow the strike. If he gets... Oh. The cheeky toss and Peksu coming over. And now he's got the Fade Bolt. Tree picked up here by Mage. Shingu Mastery going to be proc. Peksu taking a lot of damage. There's the Avalanche. And Peksu getting the kill there on to nine. <laughs> I love how he used the Boundless Strike. Like it's Fisher, try to block him off the ramp so he can <laughs> go down and pick up the haste, but it's, it was not very effective. I think not. not exactly the same thing there. <sighs> they, I'm surprised with the, just the lack of kills and Bane killing himself to the tower, getting that mana back up to full. It was 66 mana, kill yourself to the tower, come back with uh, full health and mana, ready to ma maybe make a move on to... Uh, Onto the dire side once again, and actually Madara by himself for a moment. Biver coming over. He's got level two in the brain sap, level one in the nightmare. So brain sap to start. There it is. Nightmare following it up. Both stomp double edge. Brain sap ready in six. Madara really low. The chase is on for a moment, but salve used here by maybe next time as well as uh, Madara using that tango. Plus a fairy fire and a magic stick. More than enough to keep him alive. What's happening on bottom? I don't think uh, Slaughter needs two points in Guardian Sprint, rather to have uh, one point in Bash. I've seen this exact matchup. Slaughter, Ricky. Uh, I think Slaughter had Bash on level two and just Slittering Crush, and uh, that extra proc from Bash got him a couple of kills early on. They have a Shrine ready, so they're gonna. Reset on the shrine, try to go back on top and get a kill. They just need to focus the visp. Now Gyro is low, they also have a shrine, so he should be careful about it. He needs to be a little bit careful as we've seen that combination work here with the Nightmare as well as the uh, Brain Sap. It's a level 2 Nightmare, so full duration, 5 seconds. Madara by himself. Maybe next time is far away and not going to be able to come back in time. And like you said, he should have just gone to the shrine, but instead stays in the lane and gets picked off. Ah, that's just greedy. You know that they didn't use the shrine because two heroes were not missing. They didn't uh, show on the lane with the full HP when they were low. Okay, bottom lane, Rubik. Hexu dead as uh, they drop down the smoke screen with the help of the chilling touch. It's a, it's a lot of damage coming out from Skitter right away. Kezu on the FNG goes 2-3, so still doesn't have a casual point in that bash. This game, it's really going well for them. Ricky and AA lane because of the pools. Ricky got fast level 6. He's almost one level ahead of Slaughter. Excellent. The, the rotation yeah. top. They've got the telekinesis. Has to Joe. He's surrounded, uses the double edge, and will end up falling to Pexu. Nice little rotation there. Now Pexu will smoke. So Kinesis is on cooldown. Looks like he's possibly looking to come over towards mid. 
But he could just walk all the way straight bottom, and since he doesn't have a TP, but let's see. He's setting up like he wants to find Avalanche and maybe a toss to the Rubik, and there it is under the tower. They'll have the telekinesis with Kezu here, Slither and Crush. Nice combination to get this kill on the Monkey King. That's a nicely timed gank. Smoked Rubik, back toss play. What is Tiny sitting at? Level 8. 3 points and toss. 2 in Avalanche. Shrine is ready. Do they have another smoke? They don't. Uh, this Ricky is actually on top of CS charge. Since second of the net worth. Maybe next time hit with the Nightmare once again. Oh, ooh, tether comes out. He was stomped for a moment. But was able to get the Tether in time and all the way back to Madara. So... They bring over FNG for this one, using the Chilling Touch, but they're not going to get the kill, and that leaves Ricky by himself over bottom. And now they've, they've got the Corrosive Haze, so they spot Skitter. So their Crush comes out. There's the Telekinesis. Still, though, no bash for Kezu. Not an not easy kill to long. get. Yeah, oh, Has that Tricks of the Trade. He can dodge spells when he uses Smoke Screen. Miss rate level 1 is 40%, but uh, it feels like it's more. He's doing the mental damage. Fiber. Here with the spirits, as well as ooh, Brain Sap to try and survive the Holy Missile coming in. The Nightmare is nice, because now they've got the Stampede and Madara by himself. Skitter comes over and completely turned around. Nice little nightmare there coming out from Biber. And we saw him on the Tusk. We saw him in the Bane in the first game. He is such a good support player. When you pick Monkey King as a counter to a certain mid hero, I think you need to be ahead. Tiny has the same amount of farm, even more than, than Monkey King. And nice Tiny's gonna come screen. online way faster. Nice hoof stomp, double edge coming in, Primal Spring will get the kill on a Peksu, the toss is up, lands on a Biber, he's got one shot till he's gone, Balance Strike, wipes out maybe next time. Two kills there for Team Spirit. Hoping uh, Nine get back a little bit in terms of the net worth. As he sits still 200 gold behind the Tiny, he's going for the Echo Saber first. He just wants to tank up. He's gonna give him some stats, the double proc, so double hit, I mean, so the jingle will proc way faster. And it will a ton of kill potential. Real kid over bottom. This will grab the tier one as well as a kill on FNG. Maybe next time. Goes back over towards top and has to Joe gets the kill with Skitter. Peksu. Yeah, we talked in the first game about Centaur having a one point in return. This way he didn't get it. He just wanted to maximize the damage output. Nice deep ward by Peksu, but he's gonna get scouted by a chicken, so they this should get deep warded. Is he a little TP out though? Let's see. Do they have a sentry on uh, FNG? They don't at the moment. Now he took work over top. They've got the Fiend's Grip, Double Edge, as well as the Hoof Stomp. Skitter getting yet another kill. A lot more active this game on their, on their Ricky, and over mid, they'll also take out Mage. This is FNG coming over with 9, landing that Ice Blast. And yeah, they're doing simultaneous action. Centaur was... Smoked, used the stampede, and they got the two kills from it. Top tower is about to take the plunge. Using that fiend's grip to get the that kill over top, and then the ice blast over mid. Dyer's top tower is nice. under attack. I feel like we've underestimated the uh, ancient apparition and the bane a little bit. We maybe talked too much smack Dyer's about them. But they are proving themselves to, to be quite plunge. useful. In a game like this, yeah, mid lane though, Monkey King. Yeah, Avalanche comes out, Ice Blast, following up on a Peksu. Balance Strike is there, 9 surviving for now. Stealing the Balance Strike, landing it on the 9, but still not dead. 
Cold Feet comes out on the Peksu, and somehow they get the Monkey King out. Over bottom, they'll go for Hesta Joe. And there's the Rocket with the Rocket Barrage and the Southern Crush coming through to get the kill for Kezu on a Hesta Joe. Rubik damage is so shitty, that's why Boundless Strike <laughs> didn't do any damage. Oh, Ricky, he has level 10, so more agility, Blade of Alacrity. Fiver. He ends up dying. Look for the Wukong spam of the Palace Strike that was stolen by Pexu earlier. Ice Blast coming in. They'll take out nine. Now he's still in smoke screen. Kezu. Not gonna shatter here. Mr. Joe still. He goes hood first. No blink dagger yet. So they don't have that blink hoof stomp combination. The tier one mid most likely down thanks to Mage and Madara. Madara is getting all the tower last hits. He rotated bottom. They left him to get the last hit now. The mid one as well. Instead, I think they should prioritize heroes like a Tiny and uh, Slaughter because if Slaughter got that last hit, he would probably have the Blink Dagger, which is way more important since you have a Wisp running with you. Hmm. Preemptive Chilling Touch coming out. Fiverr 9 looking for a uh, possible victim here. They might find Madara. I've got the cold feet. There's the Ice Blast with the Stampede. Maybe next time on the low ground, but it'll end up tethering over. The Balance Strike lands on to both of them. Maybe next time on the run with this tether. Hit with the Ice Blast, but it's not enough, and they'll actually just turn and get the kill with the Fiend's Grip on a Kezu, but Avalanche comes in, lands on one. They've got the call down as well as the Wukong's Command. Dropping my frame rate a little bit, but Mage now trying to get out as he tosses one of these heroes, as well as getting the kill on FNG. Madara sitting low. Hesta Joe gets the final shot. Maybe next time also falling, and they buy back on Kezu. The toss to stop the TP. They find Hesta Joe. There's the stomp on the two, but it's not going to matter. They'll throw the double edge, but Mage gets a double kill. Yeah, that's Arcane Rune Tiny there. Slaughter bought back, which is going to delay his Blink Dagger. He didn't get anything out of this fight. But we'll continue to farm jungle. Meanwhile, Skitter is going to Keep farming top, picked up two bounty runes, getting closer to the Fusal Blade. Once he picks it up, combine that with AA ulti, they can pretty much kill anyone on the map. Relatively close game at the moment, only a 2,000 net worth lead for the side of Lithium. Monkey King, however, he, compared to the Tiny he was up against, he's down to about... A thousand net worth. Dyer's top tower is under attack. I'm surprised to see Ricky on top of net worth list. The hero does not farm that quickly. If you hit creeps from behind, yes, you farm fast, faster than other heroes early on with the quelling blade. But if you're pressured, then then the hero is just in a bad spot. This game, he's having a really good time. Didn't even die once. Yeah, three on three. It's got Fiverr and FNG nearby. Skitter. Lot around the low ground. There's the chilling touch. They might look over to get Mage. Let's see, because there's four heroes here in a Sentry Ward placed down, and they've got the call down as well as the Toss Ice Quest going to be thrown over, but they'll get one and two. Skitter in a really bad way here, surrounded on all sides. And that's going to be all three going down in this top lane. Blink, Slytherin, Crush looking to get a kill there. This is starting to look a lot better for Lithium. Uh, especially grabbing those three kills without losing anybody. Yeah, now with the Slaughter being level 12, it also opens up the Roche for them after or slash if they win a next fight. He has a Blink Dagger as well, so they can... Make some good relocate plays. They smoked. Do they want to go for a Roche or try to hunt? She's just a casual smoke. I think Monkey King has finished off this Echo Saver. Yes, he has. 
And smoke coming out from Team Spirit. Esther Joe now has this Blink Dagger, and they've got the Echo Saber on this Monkey King, so it could be a time to fight for them. They have Fiend's Grip available. Meanwhile, over bottom, it's going to be Kezu and Peksu, who are both smoked up. The smoke's going to be revealed. The Blinks are opposite of each other with the Relocate coming in, but immediately hit with the, the uh, Ice Blast. Telekinesis throwing him down on FNG. The Fiend's Grip comes out on Madara. The Balance Strike hits on two. They'll take out the maybe next time to follow that one up. The Wukong's Command's going to be used, but to what? A veil as he ends up falling quickly afterwards. Mage drops, the tree gets thrown, Peksu falls to Esther Joe, and Team Spirit, they find their fight. That was a nice timed AA ulti into relocate. Man, FNG does not even have boots. He has circlet, gauntlets, observer board, and raindrop charge. He's saving the raindrop charge, maybe. When he gets level 10 with the GPN talent, he'll upgrade that to earn. Just has a couple of bracers queued up. He's got three bracers queued. How many arms do you have for those bracers? Well, he has long arms. So you're just you, yeah, you're going for the bottom. Yeah, put a couple of bracers on on each arm. Yeah. Let's see. Makes sense. Gets heavy on your arms. You do a little lifting there with the bracers. Get bigger, stronger. Put some bracers on your teeth. <laughs> he has... Zoom it in. He has one big tooth on the middle. He's got the Zoid where we go up going on here. Yeah. But yeah, it's that long too. So it's a, that's another spot for the bracer. I think, I think that's a another good smoke. Yeah, they know with this now echo saber and having fiends grip up in nine, that's the time and they want to move. And they're gonna come over bottom. Started with an ice blast that actually just hits the creep wave. MNT as well as Madara gonna back off. Grabbing this bounty rune. So the smoke doesn't find anything. And they're gonna pick four bounty runes. Good chunk oh, of gold mage. there. Oh. It's ideal to fight when you have tiny with arcane rune. You think it's the best rune in the game? For tiny, yeah. Good for Storm, good for Tiny. Definitely a lot of heroes that love having Arcane Rune. I would say over possibly... Like, obviously, Regen is... It feels good when it's those good moments, but Arcane Rune... Always feels great. So, has the Joe shown over mid. Shockwave thrown to stop that BK... Or, not BKB, Blink Dagger. For just a moment. They are setting up over me to like they want to fight for lithium. Both teams just possibly looking for their moment to jump in. And there's another smoke coming out from Team Lithium. They're gonna wrap all the way around. They might find Skitter. Bivers here as well. Kezu leading the charge for a moment. Smoke's gonna be broken. Blink, Southern Crush actually hits on both of them. Goes in the perfect spot in between. Stampede's used as is the Ice Blast, but that was a beauty there from Kezu. That was EU math right there, definitely. And this opens up the Roche. That's why both teams are so hesitating if they want to do it or not. So whoever loses the fight loses the Roche as well. Absolutely perfect for Kezu. It leads to this Roche. They're extending this lead. Lithium. All the wheels turning here for them at the moment. And uh, they will be able to pick up this Aegis on to Madara. So, Spirit, it looked like the fights were going better for them. They unfortunately get two picked off there. Is it just... Unfortunate that that smoke was coming out and they lose two or do spirits still feel like confident going into a five on five? Obviously with the Aegis you're not looking for that fight, but 
Let's if you see. look at Team Spirit's item progression, nothing big is coming out. Monkey King needs still a lot of time to get his BKB. Bane does not scale with the items. A doesn't even have boots. Ricky getting closer to a Manta style, but also a really big run. So I would say that Team Lithium should just try try to force a couple of fights now. They have 10 second BKB on Gyro, Tiny, pretty satisfied with what he has right now. Slardar as well, going to buy a BKB as well. So they should try to seek a fight. Oh. Avalanche coming out, the smoke screen, Fiend's Grip, Ice Blast, Mage, biting off more than he can chew. As he goes down with the blink, Southern Crush, Hoofstomp comes out. Now the Tether looking for the relocate to bring back maybe next time. The Wukong's command is going to be used as well as the Balance Strike, and there they go. That leaves Madara here with Peksu onto the tree, and looking for Madara even with this BKB. He's one shot from death. Look at the kill on Hesta Joe as well as Biver. Now they'll look for more. In trouble is Skitter, Madara healing up, and oh boy. They take out everybody on the side of Team Spirit, and Lithium come out way ahead. Yeah, it feels like they're way, way ahead. The number shows 6k, but it feels like it's 14k. Maybe just 14 like Team Spirit had in the previous game. Even not the best initiation, Tiny used only Avalanche, died right after with the Fiend's Grip. Now that Tiny is back up, it's uh, gonna be way, way easier. So still no big items coming on the side of Spirit. Age is still up, so they, they should try to take try to take another fight. Quick little Ice Blast coming out on Nepexu, but we were going down, as is FNG. They'll get the trade on Nepexu, but you're still losing your Tier 3 here. Now it's a lead that almost equates to 10,000 net worth. This is starting to fall downhill for Spirit very quickly. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. And the rules gonna spawn. They're gonna pick another four bounty runes. This is the problem. Once you can't get out of the base, you take a bad fight. Runes are spawning. There's really nothing you can do about it. Just pull further and further ahead. There it is, up to eleven thousand now. I mean, I don't. What What's the answer for Spirit? Uh, it looks and feels like they're just immensely behind Lithium. If they can pull off good Monkey King ulti with the BKB on him, otherwise he's not going to be able to do it. Try to get on top of the Wisp, but the Wisp now has a Glimmer Cape. And look what uh, Lithium is doing right now. They're just smoking again. They want to close this game as soon as possible. So they smoke up, they march down mid for a moment. And Mage leading the charge. They also have Kezu, Blink, Southern Crush possibilities, but the Fiend's Grip comes out as well as the Ice Blast Hoofstomp comes through, but there's the Avalanche Toss coming in. They'll get the kill on the Biver. Exu's going to be the next one to fall. They'll take out Kezu. That's two down on the side of Lithium. The Balance Strike through with the BKB. Popeye Madara slept up his Mage. Maybe next time falling, that's three dead with the Aegis popped as well. Buyback comes out from Biver. Avalanche nicely on the two, the double shot, oh. the tree throws Skitter even with the shrine, oh no. Tossed up is the Monkey King Mage with the double kill. And looks like Lithium come out ahead. This was a good spot for them to fight. They enabled Ricky and the Monkey King ulti, that's a lot of damage in a quick short of time. Now Gyro, what is he building, is that full Mjolnir? Yeah. As well as a Scotty after afterwards. Courier going down. over to the secret shop. Already has this recipe for the Mjolnir, and here it comes. And they took out the tier 3 over top, so they'll take out the shrine as well. Tiny is extremely farmed. 2.5k gold in his pockets level 18 has uh, these three core items that he needs to have he just queued up silver edge i guess he wants to break the monkey king break the centaur 
not, not sure if it's worth it. That's a, a lot of gold invested. That's almost 3,000 gold. He could have gotten a different item, a Crystallis, or just go for AC. Yeah, definitely uh, interesting to see the Silver Edge, but we'll see how he uses it. And they are very much ahead, and he'll finish the Silver Edge. I, I, does he, it almost feels like he has the luxury to go for his Silver Edge. Doesn't take up another slot, as he already had the Shadow Blade. Now he can work on something like the AC. I don't exactly think that getting Silver Edge is uh, game losing, but I, I do agree with you that there are better choices. So Roche may respawn in a minute and a half. Team Spirit does not have the best Roche lineup. No real damage unless Ricky hits it from behind, so they can't go for that sneaky play, try to steal the Roche in front of Lithium. Meanwhile, on the other side, you have Lithium with Slaughter ulti. They can take it down so easily. Courier flying, we're just bringing some sentries. The lanes are pushed, the bottom lane is pushed, so people are showing also the top lane, so Lithium knows where Team Spirit is. I'll take out this other shrine with uh, Roche possibly up in a minute. Taking out the shrine, posturing by this Roche pit. Might even have a fight coming in. Is There's the Fiend's grip with the Wukong's command. Is it going to be enough? The balance strike comes out with the BKB being popped by Kezu. The smoke screen laid down. Madara trying to do enough damage with the BKB pop. They'll take out Hesta Joe. Skidder trying to get the kill on the mage, but it's not enough damage. They'll have themselves this Slithering Crush. Three heroes dead on Team Spirit. M and T will tether over. There's the toss taking out FNG. Four heroes dead on the side of Spirit and Lithium again losing nothing. And now that's a gem. The second shrine. They have no tier two towers left, which means that if Team Lithium wants to play this safe, they could just maybe pressure tier threes, go for one set of Raxes, and uh, then go for Roche, but they don't know the Roche spawn timer is gonna spawn in two minutes so they could scout with the chicken cliff is used they're actually all full because we healed them up has six urn of urn charges they know there's no stampede no monkey king ulti no bane ulti they might actually just try to close this game looking for a chance to play Ninjas in pajamas in the upper bracket. The upper bracket final. Nice little hook stop coming out. The Ice Blast hits on a two. Kez is going to be used that BKB. The telekinesis through onto the centaur. The lose has the Joe. Madara doing so much damage. And he just gets All the right. quick ultra kill and GG's called. Biber should have gone and gave that man a rampage. I don't think the Monkey King pick worked. He, when you pick Monkey King, you wanna stomp your mid lane. You wanna have one item ahead and just snowball from there. Get some kind of an assassination item, uh, Shadow Blade, cut in the back lines. But uh, Tiny was a good counter pick because during the pick phase, as I mentioned, if he goes on him, you just toss him back. And if there's a rotation from one of your supports, Monkey King easily dies, he has a really low HP. Also, this game, I think they did not play the top lane correctly because in the first game they got way way more kills and their earlier uh, timing on a, that blink dagger on a centaur yeah it just seemed like things went wrong for spirit uh relatively quickly they were down by like four thousand net worth but it, it felt like way more and i mean if you look at the graph spirit again climbing 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 in terms of uh win percentage and then just all downhill after about 20 minutes. I mean, Lithium played really well. This time a lot better with Madara and maybe next time. 11 and 5 for Madara. Involved in 30 of the 37 was Peksu. So he did, I think he participated in the most kills on the team with 31. Oh, wow. So, I mean, a really good job from Lithium. They'll move on to versing Ninjas in Pajamas. Team Spirit go down against Odium which I believe is coming up next as uh, I think it's Team Spirit 
against Odium. And then Lithium versus Ninjas in Pajamas is the uh, best of threes for the day. So we'll be back with those two best of threes. The next one, I believe, is Odium versus Spirit. I'm your caster, Cop, joined here by Lacoste. We'll be back in just a moment. Thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, stay right there.